The man that at only 19 years old defeated Nadal in Wimbledon and that at age 21 had already defeated all the big three members is now ranked world number 93 at age 26, an age where most players are in their complete prime. So what has happened with Nick Kyrgios not only this year, which will we obviously talk about, what has happened in his evolution as a player in the last couple of years and is it possible that we've already seen the best version of him at such an early age or will he come back stronger and surprise us all in upcoming seasons what's up guys my name is tenistic and today we're here to talk about one of the most special talents in the tour but also one of the strangest characters on and off the court. If you would like to enjoy more tennis videos such as this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers. It would be great if we hit that milestone before the end of the year. That said, let's start with the video, the strange case of Nick Kyrgios. The truth is that although he's ranked number 93, that ranking does not represent his real level. And even this year where he's not even played many tournaments, he's left some great performances behind him. The most he arrived at Wimbledon and defeated Hugo Humbert, which is a great, great player, especially on fast surfaces, and who had just won his first ATP 500 in Halle. Kyrgios won that match in five sets, and it's crazy to think that a guy with no rhythm of competition at all, and who before the tournament admitted that he was not as prepared as he should be, and even under those circumstances he could play at such level. And the lack of preparation would end up being the problem, as in the match where he was dominating against Felix Auger Alassim, he was forced to retire with an abdominal injury, so at the end of the day it was his body that was not prepared to compete at that level. But the quality was obviously there, and Kyrgios has admitted many times that when doctors look at how little he works out and prepares prepares for tournaments, it's an absolute miracle that he doesn't get injured more. Although if you follow him on Instagram, he lately looks like the hardest working guy ever, posting many workouts and so much motivational content every day. So he looks like he's inspired right now. Let's see how long that mental state lasts. And precisely the mental state is what we should be talking a lot about in this video. Because there's no doubt that his game is always there. He's always one of the most dangerous players in the tour, one of the best servers in the world, very flat and uncomfortable backhand to play against, and an absolute rocket of a forehand if he has the chance to hit it. Great hands, great net skills, there's no doubt that he's such a gifted player. But like I say, it's curious to see him on Instagram in such an inspired mental state, because throughout his career he's always been the guy who is proud of not working as hard as other players, and pretty much living a normal lifestyle, where he can even party before matches, or just be more chilled instead of working out like the absolute beasts that are today's players, who the great majority of them have two or even three workouts a day. But Kyrgios is not that guy. He prefers to have more fun outside the court and not make that many sacrifices. And honestly, should we criticize him for that? Well, in my humble opinion, I think he should be more criticized for being unprofessional on the court than in his private life and his training. I mean, partying before matches is not the smartest of decisions if you ask me. It's better to do that when you're out of the tournament. But a lot of people act like he doesn't train at all and like he's the most unprofessional guy ever. I mean, except this year, where he's not been in that many tournaments to not be in a bubble. He has sacrificed a lot of things in his life to be a tennis player. He is traveling pretty much all year long. And although he sometimes says he doesn't practice a lot, to play at that level, anyone who knows about tennis, you can have all the talent you want, but it does take a lot of training playing at that level, even with his playstyle. It's as simple as if you don't train, you just miss so many balls. In his case, yeah, maybe he's not the player that trains the most, especially compared with other players, but be sure that he practices at least one hour or two a day. So yes, he could probably train more and be more dedicated to his craft, but if his ambition is not there, if it's not his goal to be a top player and prefers just to enjoy his 20s while being a tennis player, who are we to say he cannot do that? I mean, it's obviously okay to give your opinion, but it's true that maybe too much people attack him for this reason. And like I mentioned before, I think if we should criticize him for something, it's not the fact that he doesn't train like 4 or 5 hours a day like other players, but the fact that sometimes he shows up and doesn't even try in a professional match. To me, that is disrespectful to the crowd that is in attendance. And although he says that when you attend a match of his, you know what you can, and even comments about other players, and I think it's completely fair if you criticize him for that. But anyways, with all of this said, let's try and answer the question of the video. What has happened to Nick Kyrgios? Well, it's obvious that this year he has not played as much, but it's also true that the last tournaments that he has played, he was mentally not as motivated as the previous tournaments he had played this year. 
Even in the Labour Cup, which we know he absolutely loves, you could see he was very sad in the press conference, even mentioning the possibility of retiring of the sport. So apart from tennis, he was probably not passing the best moment in his private life. And that's another thing that is absolutely admirable, especially from the big three and some other players. And it's how they're able to manage their private life so that it doesn't affect their professional life. Because in a career of 20 years, it's most likely that family members are gonna die, you can have relationship problems or even breakups, or any problem that can happen to any person like anxiety or whatever. Tennis players are not robots. Well, surely Nick Kyrgios has had more tendency to this kind of problems than other players. And that's the good thing if you're a tennis player and you only work out, play tennis, go to sleep, and every single day you do this, it's much more likely to not have that many problems. In contrast, if you live a more exciting lifestyle, let's say, where you have many friends, you have many relationships, if you have many people in your life, honestly, people bring problems. It is what it is, it's just human nature. And that is a big factor on why Kyrgios is maybe more up and down than other players emotionally. So it's not as if he has had a completely disappointing career, but it's true that when looking at his early years, you would think that a guy that reaches such level at such a young age would be a top player for many years. And if Kyrgios hasn't miraculously adopted the Mamba mentality and is gonna suddenly be one of the hardest workers out there, his career is probably gonna continue like it is. One of the most dangerous players in the tour who, when motivated, he can beat absolutely anyone and can be dangerous to make a streak even on big tournaments. Many people still believe he is gonna win a Grand Slam. I don't consider that something impossible to be honest, simply because of the fact that there is no player in this world that he cannot beat. He's beaten all the top players that are the favorites to win these kind of tournaments. If he's gonna win a Grand Slam or not is a matter of being mentally in the zone, let's say, and of course his body holding up well throughout the two weeks, but obviously he's in a very good age to do that. So in conclusion, I think Nick Kyrgios is a perfect example in a sense that a top player has to have absolutely everything. And what I mean by this is obviously the talent. He has to love tennis because if you don't love tennis, you're not going to be able to train as much as other players do. I would say every single player at the top is very passionate on what they do a very stable private life, which doesn't disturb them from being consistent in tennis, great physical conditions, being lucky with injuries. I mean, a top player has to be just the complete, but the mindset is not there, or at least yet.